Hello and welcome. Operations research, game theory, game without saddle point, and we are discussing the methods of solving a game without saddle point. And now this is turn of arithmetic method or shortcut method. Again, I have selected the same problem because I want you compare the methods of solution of a game without saddle point by solving the same problem through different methods. And as we know in this game, maximum is minus 6 and minimax is 4. So we can say that the game has no saddle point. And so we need to use the mixed strategies. Rather, the players need to use mixed strategies and we need to find out the probabilities of the players using different strategies. We, I have changed the signs of probabilities from x and 1 minus x and y and 1 minus y because 1 minus x and 1 minus y creates somewhat confusion that I came to know after watching the lectures I have already uploaded. That's why in this sum, in this problem I have changed the sign. P1 is the probability that A selects or chooses or uses strategy A1 and P2 is for A2. Similarly, Q1 is the probability that B player B selects or chooses or uses strategy B1 and Q2 is for B2. And as we know that player A is gainer, the whole thing is say, thought or done as point of view and B is the competitor which we believe a loser. Now we are going to use, as I said, arithmetic method or shortcut method. Shortcut method, a very sweet term. Yes, we all like that term. And this is really a shortcut method because the same probabilities as we had calculated in the previous two lectures through algebraic method as well as the formula method will be here by a very easy method. Okay. Now what to do? Yes, to calculate probability of P1, we need to take difference of the payoffs written against A2. This is somewhat trend, but it is easy. So, to calculate P1, we need to take first the difference of payoffs against A2. And difference means higher minus lower 4 minus minus 6 equals to 10 and similarly to calculate probability of P2 first we need to find out the difference between the payoffs of strategy A1 this is 8 minus minus 7 so it is 15 now what is P1? P1 is this 10 is taken as favorable number of cases. Remember the chapter of probability rather beginning of the chapter of probability and it will be divided by total of 10 and 15. So it comes to 10 by 25 it is 2 by 5. Yes it was in the previous cases. Similarly P2 will be 15 upon total of these two, 10 plus 15, it comes to 15 by 25, it comes to 3 by 5, because summation of P1 and P2 is always 1, that is the fundamental rule of probability distribution. So P1 is 2 by 5, P2 is 3 by 5. So we can say that A would use the strategies A1 and A2 respectively in the ratio of 2 is to 3 that is 2 by 5 and 3 by 5 in random manner and This is actually long run proportion. 
so many times the game is this game is played by a and b and in long run a would use a1 a2 in the ratio of 2 is to 3 and because of that expected gain because instead of using the term payoff i am directly using gain because we believe that a is the gainer what will be the gain or rather expected gain of a if p1 is 2 by 5 and p2 is 3 by 5 it will be if b uses strategy b1 then a's expected gain will be 8 into 2 by 5 plus minus 6 into 3 by 5 that is 16 by 5 minus 18 by 5 that is minus 2 by 5 gain comes to minus 2 by 5 that means in long run A will have net loss of 2 by 5 or it can be calculated with the help of the belief that B uses strategy B2 then it will be minus 7 into 2 by 5 plus 4 into 3 by 5 so it will be minus 14 by 5 plus 12 by 5 it must be the same now what about B the probability that B uses strategy B1 is Q1 and that for B2 is Q2 and the, in same way we can calculate Q1 and Q2 yes to calculate Q1 we have to consider the payoffs of strategy B2 and that will be 4 minus minus 7 that is 11 and here it is 8 minus minus 6 14 so Q1 will be 11 upon 11 plus 14 that is 11 by 25 and Q2 will be 14 upon 11 plus 14 that is 14 upon 25 that means B would use strategies B1 and B2 respectively in the ratio of 11 is to 14 that is 11 by 25 and 14 by 25 in random manner in long run and his expected payoff B's expected payoff will be if A1 so is used by A then B's payoff will be 8 I would prefer to use the term expected loss of B because we have assumed that B is a loser so it will be 8 into 11 by 25 plus minus 7 into 14 by 25 that is 88 by 25 plus minus 98 by 25 so it comes to minus 10 by 25 that is minus 2 by 5 <coughs> but this is loss and negative loss means gain that means in long run B is going to have net gain of 2 by 5 yes or we can calculate the same expected loss believing that A uses strategy A2 that will be minus 6 into 11 by 25 plus 4 into 14 by 25 that is minus 66 by 25 plus 56 by 25 that is minus 10 by 25 that is minus 2 by 5 so B would use B1 and B2 in the ratio of 11 is to 40 in a random manner and as a result his expected gain in long run will be 2 by 5 this is negative but this is loss negative loss means gain this is negative gain negative gain means loss so if we even though we believe that A is a gainer he is going to make a loss and B is a loser he is gain, going to make a gain in long run if if they use the respective strategies in these two ratios and we can say that the value of gain is 
minus 2 by 5 because the value of gain is always expressed with reference to the gainer. So in this way we can also calculate the probabilities by this very simple method. That's it. Thank you very much.